Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about center of pressure and also relating it to the center of gravity and why that's important. And this is something I've touched on in my video on Nissan's LMP1 car. Uh, basically why they're you know doing the way they're doing it with the front engine front wheel drive and how they're optimizing aerodynamics. Uh, but it's not something I have a specific video on so I thought I would do that. And so basically we have a car here and it's going to be traveling through the air in this direction. And you've got all these different forces of air pressure uh, on this car. So you know at the front of the car it's ramming into the Air, you're going to have this high pressure area and then as you start to go over it you're going to have less pressure you know perhaps some lift then as you start to get into the windshield you know you're going to have another high pressure area then you'll start to have some lift and then you'll start to have these areas these pockets here where you essentially have a vacuum because you're just punching through the air and so you've got more turbulence and you're going to have drag as a result of these and then you've got like this rear wing, which is also going to be supplying downforce. So you've got high pressure on top of that. And so when you sum up all these pressures in the vertical area, uh, basically you can come to see where do all of those pressures on as an average, where do they line up? And so, you know, that's going to basically dictate some of the performance characteristics of your car. Uh, and so if you have your center of pressure far behind your center of gravity, you're going to have a lot more uh, load on your rear tires than your front tires when you're going around a corner. And so your front tires aren't going to have enough grip. And so you'll understeer. If your center of pressure is in front of the center of gravity, then you're going to have a lot of load on your front tires, so they'll have plenty of grip, but your rear tires won't have that additional grip, and so you'll have oversteer. So the ideal scenario is while you're going around a corner, you're going to have your center of pressure and your center of gravity kind of line up, and so then you'll have a neutrally behaving vehicle, because as you go around that corner, you have even distribution of pressure and even distribution of the cornering load as you're going around that corner. Now this does depend on a few things. So while you're going around a track, you know you're accelerating and you're decelerating, and this is causing load transfer transfer between the front and rear axles uh, and so depending on what track you have uh, what track you're on you know you may want to change the balance slightly depending on the characteristics of that track and you know where you're keeping your weight primarily also the center of pressure can change with speed so you know all these different aerodynamic features are more or less efficient than one another so as you start to get to higher speeds some of them will provide more downforce some of them won't provide as much downforce and so as a result of that, you know, your center of pressure can change with speed. So that's another thing you can kind of play with and try and optimize it uh, at every speed. So some different ways that you kind of change the center of pressure's location front to rear, uh, some of them seem pretty obvious. You know, for the rear, if you have a spoiler or rear wing, you're adding a lot of downforce to that rear area. And if you have a diffuser, you know, diffusers typically start at the rear, and most of the time this is just basically due to regulations. Uh, but if you have that diffuser, it's, it's more challenging to get it to have the, uh, basically the peak pressure down here. So you're going to have your largest negative pressure of the diffuser towards the back, so you're going to have a lot of downforce at the rear of the vehicle. And then, you know, you can kind of optimize your exhaust flow with diffusers, things like that, which have been done in Formula One in order to basically increase the downforce at the rear. Now bringing it towards the front, things like splitters can help. So a splitter basically, you have this high pressure area hitting the front of the car, and so that high pressure, it wants to travel underneath the car as well as over the car. Uh, and so a splitter, basically you're preventing it from allowing that high pressure air to get below the car where your diffuser would then be less effective. And the other thing you're doing is you're actually taking that high pressure and pushing down on the front of the car. So it's uh, definitely an important way of creating downforce towards the front. You can also have dive planes, which would be kind of these little wings up at the front. Uh, front diffusers, which basically is a compromise in your diffuser system, and that's typically due to regulations why you would run something like that. And then of course front wings, things like in Formula One or IndyCar, where you do have a front wing uh, to increase the downforce at the front of the vehicle. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.